Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to take a look at some numbers here in the Phoenix market area, and we're going to ask ourselves, are we seeing glimmer of hope or more fear? Um, a lot of things have really happened in the last quarter of this year that people didn't think was going to happen. Remember, marry the house, date the rate. Well, that's not working out too well for you right now yet, is it? Remember the big rate cut that we were going to see September 18th when the central bank cut rates? That didn't happen. What happened to the big recession? The recession was supposed to be here by now. It's been predicted for two years. Um, didn't happen. I'm going to show you those numbers. What happened to the crash, the big real estate crash of 20 to 30 percent? That hasn't happened. Um, inventory has exploded. Well, it's it's gone up. I'm going to show you where it is. Um, are prices going to increase next year or decrease? It's election time. People were saying that the central bank was going to lower rates to spur the economy to make it look good for the current administration. That didn't happen. They said that the books were going to be cooked so that they could make the current administration look good. All depends on what category you're looking at. So let's look at some of the numbers here because it's really interesting when you kind of drill around and just take the emotions out of it. All realtors, you're just trying to make the housing market look good. Um, you know, you're not selling anything. You're trying to create FOMO. Um, if there's that many people looking at YouTube, trying to get advice from real estate agents on them making their decision, then we've got more clout than I thought. So, I mean, I get it. A lot of realtors out there showing you the data, including me. And, uh, so there's people that have a different take on it, but the numbers are numbers. And let's look where we're at today. I mean, nobody saw this coming. 7.08. I thought we were supposed to be in the high fives by now and all the buyers were going to come out and the bidding wars were going to start. Well, that didn't happen. Now, what is going on? Why is this? This is the chart that I found that to me really explains everything. If you go back and you look at some of my videos prior to September 18th, I was saying just because the central bank comes out and makes a cut does not mean that mortgage rates are going to go down. Mortgage rates usually go up about an eighth of a point when they get out there and announce that they're making the cut because the bond market's already taken that into consideration. But all they're cutting is the overnight rate. It's 10-year treasury yields that affect mortgage rates, and that's the red line down here. What's this blue line? The blue line is what the Fed did. Notice how they cut. They went down, and the yield went up. Why is that? Well, <sighs> It's not going to get any better until we start seeing some improvements in our national debt, which right now is rocking at about $35 trillion And nobody is taking any action during an election year to uh, make the appropriate cuts in spending to bring that down. And it's being reflected in the, in the bond market. People want a higher treasury yield. If you want them to hold on to these treasury bonds for a long period of time, more than 10 years, they're going to demand more. Uh, because they know that we're going to have to keep selling more and more of these bonds to finance the debt. Now, there's all kinds of different scenarios where the central bank may have to jump in again and uh, start purchasing some of the debt and holding it on their books. And that's how I see uh, kind of a big thing to watch in 2025. But I don't want to get too wonky on that. But here's where we are in our GDP. Not For all of those people saying that we were going to have a recession, uh, it ain't happening, folks. We're up 2.8% in Q3. We're up 3.3% in uh, Q2 and Q1 up 1.6. A recession is a negative GDP like this one over here in Q1 of 22. Not there. So those waiting for it, uh, we shall again wait. Remember the inverted yield curve that was predicting a major recession? Didn't happen. Active listings. Now, this always goes up and down. This is active listing counts measured daily. And it's measured daily because, um, well, that's the reason it goes up and down. More listings are listed like on Thursday and Friday, and then they go down Monday through Wednesday. So they're up, then they're down. So you can see that they went up like 19.5 here, and then they're 19.357 now. Now, for those of you that are saying that foreclosures are growing and exploding, I'm going to blow a hole in that. Whoops, let me get this back to where it says all again. And I'm going to include REO, which are foreclosures. 40. Now, that's up from 20. So you can say, 
our foreclosures have doubled, but that's not very many folks. I have always said a high percentage of a small number is still a small number is 40. Well, what about short sales? Well, short sales right here, there are, uh, looks like if I could pull the REO off there, 122 higher, but it's not out of whack. So there's another way to look at active foreclosures that we see here. And if I can pull that up just a moment, there it is. Notice of trustee sales and this compares it out quite a few more years. We're way down here. We're not way over here. We're not climbing. Don't believe the hype that says the foreclosures are on the rise, that things are real bleak. There's too much equity out there, folks. People are sitting on their homes with really low interest rates with a lot of equity. There's no fear. They don't have to sell in fear. If they've lost their job, yeah, they're probably going to have to sell their house. If they bought in 2022 and they got to sell now, there's hardly ever a time where buying and holding a home less than two years is a good financial play. Stop treating houses like the stock market, looking for the peak and then looking for the basement. It's a place where you want to live and you want to have a permanent residence where your payment stays the same for 30 years if you can. Refinance it lower if you can. People are getting hit pretty hard right now with insurance costs and uh, and taxes. So it's harder to buy a home right now than it has been. And we had the big run up in 21 and 22, 20 and 21, that uh, really kind of put a ding in the market. And uh, we may be here for a while. I don't know. Just because we went up fast doesn't mean that we're going to go down fast. And we haven't seen that despite everybody telling us it's coming. Here's pending listings. They've been flat. They're not doing much pending listings. Listings where people have taken it off the market for all intents and purposes. They got an offer that looks good, so they marked it as pending. The other thing that we look at too is accepted contracts versus back on the market. Number of contracts that have been accepted. In other words, I'm going to accept your offer, uh, but I'm going to look at some backups too. So that number is... Uh, it's waffling up and down a little bit. Um, as we get into the season here, it's going to go lower. Thanksgiving, Christmas, is always lower. Back on the market, people putting their homes back on after they've taken it off for one reason or another has not changed all year. These are seasonal dips. I mean, holidays right here where contracts are way down. Uh, but as a rule, we're sitting right here and it's below average. Um, nothing major going on there. So I see in my seven day moving average now that we're down to about 2,400 new contracts uh, over the past seven days. That's only down about uh, 75 homes. So it hasn't taken the big holiday dip yet, but it's very clear in everything that you see and everything that you read that people are waiting for this election to be over. And there's just a lot of anxiety. And so people don't make major capital purchases if they're unsure who's going to be running the government. But there are some big things going on in the Valley here. One of them is up by the Taiwan chip plant. And it's interesting here that it says, uh, this is going to be a $7 billion city within a city is planned for Phoenix. It's not just the chip plant, but you've got all this development that's going on around it. Shops, restaurants, offices, housing, kind of a big deal up there. And from what I've read, that Taiwan chip plant is uh, producing more chips it's scheduled to produce more chips here in Arizona than uh, they actually do in Taiwan, which uh, that's really good for us. So we don't have to import this from Taiwan. We can have it produced here locally, but that part of town growing like crazy. We do have some parts of town where house prices are coming down and uh, some areas are getting hit pretty, pretty hard like Maricopa, um, Santan, um, far east mesa perhaps um but there's a lot of new construction going on there too and a lot of the price reductions that you're seeing right now in new construction um watch it over a period of time because some of it is just year-end closeouts that they do in september and october they just want to they don't their fiscal year doesn't end december 31st it usually ends like the end of october so they're trying to clear things out on the books to make their books look better for the year uh, so you really got to watch and see how it's trending. There are some bargains to be had out there, uh, but there's also, you know, it's still pretty expensive. It's hard to find anything under 500000 if that's what you're looking at, unless you go far, far west. 
These new developments far east in Blossom Rock, uh, they are moving. They're not moving like crazy, but new construction is the place to be right now because of the interest rates that they offer. Even if you're sitting there looking at 7.08, you can get something uh, in the mid fives or in some cases even lower in new construction. They buy it down permanently. So that's really the only game in town right now. Now, except for luxury, anything above a million and a half right now, it's, it's going well. Um, it's, you know, it used to, we used to say before the run up in 2021, that anything over a million dollars would take nine months to a year to get an offer on to sell. It took a long time. Uh, not the case now. The average is somewhere between 50 and 80 days. And, uh, I was out last week and I couldn't believe the foot traffic we had in some of the homes I was seeing over $2 million. And one of them had an offer of 1.5 million, had an offer the next day. They don't worry about interest rates. There's, that's a market that is primarily cash. So in that high end market here, cash is king. And there's a lot of transaction volume where we're getting hit is between 400 and $800,000. Right now in this market, if you're pricing at market, in other words, if you look at all the homes that sold in your area and you get an average and you price at market, it's going to sit there. So you're going to have to start pricing below market if you expect any activity. Now, you're not going to get any activity this week, barely. And people are just staying home. I mean, I voted yesterday uh, just because I anticipate a lot of lines next week. Um, but people are still sitting it out. They're going to wait, see what happens. And we're going to track the numbers, and I'm going to show you. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> the current trends we have right now are going to be the current trends that we have in the first week of December. So try not to have any anxiety or fear. Just kind of watch the numbers, see what's going on. I showed you that a lot of the projections that were out there that were wildly being shouted just never happened. And uh, I don't expect next year to be any different. We'll have a year full of surprises. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.